And um, so our chairs, this is what happens when you really realize the detail that certain people offer <laughs> in your lives. He wasn't here this morning, so our chairs are off. So I apologize. We'll get that fixed next week. But I'm Reverend Betsy Singleton Snyder, pastor of Preaching and Missions. And again, welcome. We're glad to hear, have you all this morning. I want to invite you, if you would, to please tear off your registration connect card. If you'll tear that off, make sure that it's complete. And put it in the offering basket when the ushers um, bring those around a little bit later for our offering uh, our, in our special gifts. In fact, we have a special offering this morning you'll hear a little bit about later on in the service called Family Promise of Pulaski County. We work with Family Promise. We just actually hosted families here in our church. And it's a, a really important ministry for those who are transitioning from homelessness to um, housing of their own. So... We are in our third week of our series, Holy Heroes, Great Power, Great Responsibility. And this morning, um, we are going to be looking at Jesus' teaching in the temple and how his parents responded to that. And the title of the sermon is Starting Early and Finishing Strong. At this time, I would invite you to stand, if you would. Sorry, this. <laughs> and Pamela Marquez this morning um, is one of our interns. And we're so glad to have her assisting us with worship this morning. And she's going to lead us in our corporate prayer. Call this fragile world secure. Um, let us pass the peace of Christ to our neighbors, one to another, and welcome one another.
sounds so beautiful when we all sing together with one song, with one voice. And I love that song because it says that our God is holy. And it gives us a chance to participate with the rest of creation as we bless his name. You know, we're talking about superheroes, and I don't know about you guys, but there are not very many days in my life where I feel like a superhero. <laughs> Most of the days I feel like I'm just kind of struggling along. But what I like about Jesus is that he comes and he stands right beside us, right beside me. And he lets me know that I don't have to be some super ordinary person. I just have to learn how to walk with him. He said, take my yoke upon you for it's easy. And so he doesn't ask me to do anything that's outside of what he's willing to help me do. And he's not the kind of superhero that does everything for me. But rather, he calls me out past my comfort zone into the deep places of him. Brooke's going to sing a song now about how he calls us out with his love and how much he loves us. I hope that you worship with us as we sing.
you may be seated. At this time, we are so excited to welcome this morning um, all of our children who participated in um, Vacation Bible School. Well, not all of them, but a group of them. And Mr. Chip Gross, who leads um, our music um, for our children, is going to invite them to come forward this morning and sing with him. Hey, guys. Okay, I need all my people from VBS to come on up here. We're gonna do our song that we know, that we love, that we jump, and we have fun, and we dance around. I think you know it. We're gonna go like, and then we go like this. Okay, all right. So we're all gonna come up, and I don't know. Yeah, well, I think, okay. Let's go, congregation, let's let you decide. Would you rather see me jumping around and see my face, or would you rather see their faces as they're jumping around? And maybe I'll be over there, how about that? Definitely, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. I want everybody to be on the top right over there. I need to be really super careful because you're on steps. Okay, so when you're jumping, how about we just jump in one spot and we don't try to do too many superhero things. Although a little is always good. Okay. Now, uh, this song that we're about to do, this is a theme song for VBS this past week, which was all about how we are God's superheroes. He gives us strength to do amazing, wonderful things. Of course, um, as we shared just earlier, God gives us all that we need to accomplish those things, right? They're all decided beforehand. But uh, this is a wonderful song. It's short. I'm going to give you a brief little teach of the moves, okay? It's like a 10-second thing, and you can do them with us. So we're going to start the song, and uh, it's really simple. But at one point, we're going to say, what do we say first? Jump into the action. Let's run the race. We're going to go like this with our arms. You can watch me and just do this. Jump into the action. Let's run the race. And then we're just going to kind of, since you're in your chairs, maybe you won't get up. I don't know. It's early in the morning. But you just sort of shift back and forth, okay? okay? Um, you just watch me, and you're gonna, all right? Let's do it. You guys ready? I love this song. Do we have the video? children's message. Should I sit with you? That's what they usually do, right? I don't know. Maybe I'll just walk around. I like to walk around and be on my feet. <laughs> so I was thinking, leap of faith. That's an interesting bunch of words. When you're three or four, 
There's not a whole lot that that can mean, right? Except you jump a lot. And then faith, you know, is about something that you believe. So I'm going to keep this really, really simple. Well, our scripture today talks about Jesus going to the temple. And he was a kid just like you. Um, in fact, he was a little tiny baby. And he grew up and became a kid. And then he grew up and became a young man. And then he grew up and he became a man, right? So he was just like all of us in that way. And when he was about 12 years old, which is a bit older than all of you, he went to the temple. And his parents left. And he stayed there. And they didn't know that. Oops. Now, has that ever happened to you? Where well, I hope not. Well, you, your parents went away and you were still there? That's happened to me, believe it or not. I remember one time, I stayed and I told my parents, okay, I had a ride, you're good, you don't need to come get me. And then my ride canceled on me. And I didn't have a phone, I couldn't tell them. And I was stuck, waiting at that place until about 8.30 p.m. I didn't know where I was. They had called the police, all these things. Horrible things that happened, right? And out of that punishment, I got a cell phone. <laughs> The point I'm trying to make is that my parents had to take a little leap of faith and trust God that I was okay, even though they didn't know, right? They had to call the police, they had to do all these things that were scary, and they found me right where they had taught me to be, which was right where they'd left me, because I just stayed there like a good kid and I followed them, right? But I also had to do some leaping of faith because I had to trust that they would come and get me, right? So that was a little bit scary, but God is good. And on top of that, I got a phone. So, um, I don't know, I'm trying to keep it simple for you, but no matter what happens in your life, no matter what, it may be scary, but you can trust God. He is really good, and he knows exactly what you need, and he's got you covered, okay? Can we bow our heads and put our hands together, and we'll just pray for just a moment? You guys did such a good job. I'm so proud of you. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for how good you are. Thank you for the, the fun week that we get to have, meeting friends and singing songs and dancing and jumping around. Um, but thank you, first and foremost, that, that you are so good and that you always look after us and you have good, good plans for us and you always will help us achieve all the things you ask us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Didn't they give a good job? Can we give them a round of applause? Here. A little hand for the kiddos. stand as you are able for a reading from Luke 2, 41 to 52. Each year, his parents went to Jerusalem from the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to their customs. After the festival was over, they were returning home, but the boy Jesus stayed behind the Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it, supposing that he, he was among their, their band of travels. They journeyed on for a full day while looking for him among their families and friends. When they didn't find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and putting questions to them. Everyone who hear him was amazed by his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were shocked. His mother said, Child, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father and I have been worried. We've been looking for you. Jesus replied, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he said to them. Jesus went down to Nazareth with them and was obeying to them. His mother transcended every world in her heart. Jesus measured in wisdom and years, in his favor, favor with God and with, and with people. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us join together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, either through me 
or in spite of me, speak the good news that we may hear it, live it, and embrace it. In the name of the Christ, amen. Is my mic on? No. I'm having some problems with my microphone. I can talk very loud, as a lot of you know, so it's not a problem. <laughs> okay, got it. This time last year, I was trying to complete a, a book I was writing about being an overwhelmed parent and working woman and all those sorts of things. And in that book, I talk a lot about Jesus' mother, Mary. I mean, I really love Mary. To me, Mary is a very interesting person in her own right. It's true we refer to her in very sacred terms as the mother of God, the Theotokos, um, the one who is, and that word literally means God-bearer, the God-bearer. Our Apostles' Creed bears witness to what the church agreed to say about Mary almost 2,000 years ago, born of the Virgin Mary. It's a phrase that makes clear Jesus is fully and completely human. Divine, yes, but also fully human. You know, even if you struggle with the idea of the virgin birth, focus on what the church, the early church, believed was most important in that teaching, that Jesus was both God and human, divine and yet also one of us. That thought, of divinity and of humanness coinciding together is one I love as a Christian. God in human flesh even has a mother, and she acts like a regular mother. Even before her baby is born, Mary dreams about her child. She imagines uh, what he might be, what he will be. She sings a song, remember, the Magnificat, about what, she will become, what he will become, um, and what she will become as a parent, <clears throat> but mostly about what God will do through her child. That's the song she sings. God, through her child, will raise up the lowly, lowly like her. Her child will love the peasants among whom she lives, among whom he lives. God will do mighty things for those who are considered the least. That's her song. That's her lullaby. Mary is bold in her belief that this child will change the world. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but I think most parents hope their children will grow up to be people who are wise and who are kind and compassionate and make good decisions. In that regard, I don't think we're very different from Mary or Mary from us. At my home, as we've been talking about heroes, one of our favorite heroes at my house and one of the favorite make-believe stories at our house is the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. By the second book and movie, if you've only watched the movies, the readers know that Harry and his friends, Ron and Hermione, are regular children, all three of them. They're regular children who use their special gifts in very difficult and dark situations. And yet, they are not immune to correction from their professors who will deduct points from their house <laughs> if they misbehave, who will give them detention or correct them with stinging rebukes. In the second book or movie, The Chamber of Secrets, Harry and Ron miss the Hogwarts Express. You may remember that. They're late uh, to the train, and so they can't get to the school back uh, on time. Instead, they decide to take an enchanted flying car, the one that Mr. Weasley has enchanted against sort of Ministry of Magic rules, and they find themselves crash landing into the historic Whomping Willow, a very rare tree on the campus. They are fortunate they are not hurt or killed. I want us to watch this scene as Harry's friend Ron receives a howler from his mother. <laughs> Say it. I'm doomed. You're doomed. Hi, Harry. 
I'm Colin Creevy. I'm in Gryffindor too. Hi, Colin. Nice to meet you. Ron, is that your owl? Bloody birds are menace. Oh, no. Look, everyone. Weasley's got himself a howler. <laughs> Go on, Ron. I ignored one from my gran once. It was horrible. Ronald Weasley! Steal that car! I am absolutely disgusted! Your father's now facing an inquiry at work, and it's entirely your fault! If you put another two out of line, we'll bring you straight home! Oh, and Ginny, dear, congratulations on making Gryffindor. Your father and I are so proud. Sometimes we teach through modeling, and other times it may take a howler. <laughs> there are no stories of Jesus' childhood at all in any of the Gospels except today in Luke's Gospel. And like many childhood stories, we learn that the main character gets in trouble. Jesus gets in trouble for being too devout, too spiritual, too religious. Actually, that's not really why he gets in trouble, though, is it? The reason Jesus is in trouble is because his parents don't know where he is. Now, I'm going to just be real honest here. I tend to side with Mary on this thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of with his mom. Mary is not a passive figure. I contend that Mary is a bossy mama. A lot of people see Mary as very, as very passive. I see her as active all the way through her spiritual journey, including making a conscious decision after her son's ascension and after his, after his resurrection and ascension to become a part of his movement. And it took some convincing before she did that in her heart. After all, that movement hurt her son. So Mary is not a helicopter parent. She's already endured an angel's unusual birth announcement, a doubtful fiancé, a barnyard birth, a nighttime escape to Egypt to protect her child from a crazed King Herod. All these things she's already been through. Imagine her thoughts when young Jesus goes missing them. Mary could do without her son's quiet departure from their large caravan. You know, in the ancient world, a caravan included thousands of people with extended family and friends. I used to think a caravan was like 50 people. No, no, it's thousands of people. It could be 20,000 as they share resources and move from place to place and watering hole to watering hole. So it isn't surprising that Mary and Joseph have lost track of Jesus in this crowd. He may be playing, they may assume, or he may be talking or hanging out with friends and other families he knows. He is, after all, coming of age. After a time, however, they cannot find him and must return to the temple. They go back to the place where all this started, retracing their steps, I assume. And after much searching, when they find him at the temple, Jesus is sitting in the thick of the adult teachers, listening to them, asking questions, and even offering some of his own thoughts and opinions. And Mary looks her rabbinical progeny, progeny in the eyes and says, son, why have you scared us to death? You listen to me. Your dad and I have been worried sick. We've been looking for you everywhere. Okay, that's sort of my paraphrase. <laughs> Jesus then gives his mother the polite brush off. Did you notice that? The one that signals he is beginning to claim his own thoughts and opinions about the world. Jesus says, why, 
Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? This is not, this is not the first or only time Mary's son will brush her off and begin, as all children do, to claim his own calling. I think I may understand that space right now, since I have an 11-year-old, where Mary finds herself as mother, the space where your child is growing up, and yet you are and always will be protected because you know you know the world can hurt you. You know the world can disappoint you. And you don't want that to come to your child. And yet, I think Jesus is telling his parents that he must begin to test, to try out what they have taught him to this point. Prior to the 12th year, the final year of preparation for a boy uh, before he entered the full life in the religious uh, uh, community of the synagogue, his parents, especially his father, are teaching him the commandments of the law. Sort of like we do confirmation, right? We're soon uh, going to, um, next month, recognize the new confirmation class that we'll be learning and studying for this year in which they decide whether to take the vows of the church upon themselves. So, Jesus is sort of doing the same thing, and Jesus would formally take the yoke of the law and become a, you call heard of the term, bar mitzvah, and what does that term mean? Son of the commandment. A bar mitzvah is a, is, means literally son of commandment. When I was in Israel, um, in Jerusalem, at the temple, it was great to see people coming in with these incredible parades and celebrations of bar mitzvahs. They kind of, sometimes they're wedding celebrations, and sometimes, if you've ever been there, you'll see uh, kind of almost on a regular basis these bar mitzvahs and just the incredible celebration as people really understand what it means to be coming of age. So this learning is not only for Jesus, you see, it's also for his parents who must realize that he is not completely under their control anymore and will not always anymore be found at their side. <coughs> I'm raspy this morning, excuse me. This past week, I went to school. I went to sort of my own vacation Bible school, just like our children who participated in their vacation Bible school here at our church this week. And they were here, as you already have seen, learning about this story, the sacred story of Christ, and, and also the story of Jesus in the temple and other stories. They were learning about what it means to become wise, they were sitting with and actively involved with the teachers who love God. I think we had, so we had like over 400 kids, Miss Cindy, or 500, and then like 200 teachers and helpers. Wow. That's a caravan almost, right? <laughs> I don't think we lost anyone, right? <laughs> Nobody got lost. Yay. That's incredible. So meanwhile, just bad timing, Miss Cindy. I was in Nashville at a spiritual writers conference, um, which is a time with other writers to learn from them, to sit with them, and to listen to them and understand better who God is and who neighbor is, and how to love God and neighbor even more which is hard, and specifically to do that by, as we as writers called it, making dark marks on a page. Making dark marks on a page. At times, I felt overwhelmed by the beauty of the words I listened to other people read that they had made on pages. They washed over me. I had to listen and listen again I had to write them down and think about them. I will be studying them and reflecting over them for quite some time, I'm sure. Let me tell you who I was able to listen to. Um, Barbara Brown Taylor, who's one of my absolute favorite spiritual writers. I've been reading collections of her sermons since I was a pastor, a young pastor here in the 1990s. She's got some amazing collections. And um, 
that is me with Barbara Brown Taylor. <laughs> it's like being in the temple. Um, and also, I was with um, another younger writer, Rachel Held Evans. And um, in fact, um, yeah, I look like a bow-legged cowboy. And I was, she's shorter than I am, not, which is amazing. <laughs> and I was having to, to bend down to get my, my face in there um, so my friend Gail could take pictures. But it was so wonderful because you can go to the next picture. I was actually, we could sign up for like 20 minute conferences with these women. And I signed up for a time with Rachel and that is us talking about writing and about who we are as writers and for me, who I would like to be and grow to be. So I was really thankful to listen to how they write what is spiritual. I was frightened for all I don't know, and I was humbled, and maybe I was learning some deeper wisdom, some of which I hope will, will help me also to love more and to help all of us love more. You know, it's so scary. It's really scary to learn new spiritual truths about yourself and the world. It can be really frightening, but that's how we grow in our faith, is to be thrown off a little bit so that we might ask the questions. The actor um, Idris Elba met with a group of people in a pub several years ago and asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello, Idris. Hello, Glenn. All right, Hi. Glenn. Christopher. Hi, Christopher, how you doing? You Good, right? thanks. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> well, I like that. When I grow up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, when I grow up, <laughs> I'm quite well grown. I mean, you do realise that you're still growing, right? Oh, no, you never stop learning, do you? Of course, yeah, absolutely. So, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? So the dream. The dream. I want to make quilts, amazing quilts. I'd like to play drums, actually. <laughs> I don't think I've told anybody that before. Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> Just uh, look after the people I love. I've always wanted to be an actor. Spoken word artist. Hot air balloon pilot. Football coach, I think. You know. Football coach? What do you think stopping you from doing it? Time, like... It's just taken years to get to where we are now. Yes, a certain point in your life where if it hasn't happened, you think that it's, it's never going to happen. You kind of lose a little bit of ambition and then you just kind of ride along. I don't think people have enough time to dream, bro. Unfortunately, real life does get in the way of your dreams, I guess. If you really had the opportunity, would you take the chance? 100%. Really? I wouldn't even think about it. What if I said to you, I'd like to help you get your qualifications as a pro coach? Oh, my God. I'm going to set you up with the kit so you look the part. I'm going to take you down to QPR, the women's football team there, as a coach. And he's agreed that you can be his assistant for the day. Martino. Hi, nice to see you. This is Nori. Hi, Nori. How are you doing? Nice, nice to meet you. You up for that? Absolutely. Are you sure? Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. Let's go. When we're kids, we play, we think, we dream, but as an adult, we kind of, like, slow down very quickly. Yes, she is. Myself and Purdy's, we think that people shouldn't stop growing. They should always challenge themselves. Hold it there, put on the ball. Thank you, No matter what stage they are in life, people shouldn't stop dreaming. They should thrive on. has stolen what we need to be doing. <laughs> I, I love what Purdy's is saying, but that belongs to church. <laughs> helping people grow, helping people take risks, helping people to become who God wants them to be. And I want to submit to you, I just turned 56 like a week and a half ago. We'll see, two weeks ago. <laughs> and no, a week ago. <laughs> A week ago yesterday. Shows, um, that shows my age. That shows my age. I can't remember. Um, and I just published with the help of a dear friend who, who 
persisted. Knowing my dream in, at my age, my first book. I don't know if I'll have another one. I, I, I got to talk to my editor about that. And I'm not saying this, y'all, to, woo, Betsy. I'm, I'm saying this because I suspect that you all have dreams. You should. And that they are dreams that will help other people and bring other people to know Christ at a deeper level. I think that woman who said she wanted to be a coach, if you are a coach, you <laughs> have an opportunity to show people the love of Christ. In our scripture story today, we see that not only is Jesus learning, but so are his parents. We, and we all have this opportunity to grow in our spiritual journey, but frankly, we've, we've got to apply ourselves. We need to study. We need to think. We need to reflect. We need to question. As Frederick Beekner said, blind faith is no faith at all. One of the reasons I like the works of Barbara Brown Taylor and Rachel Telda Evans is that both ask and invite believers to question. Ironically, Rachel Held Evans, who is the author of several books, but most recently the author of Searching for Sunday, grew up as a very conservative evangelical Christian in the Tennessee town where the Scopes trial was held over the issue of evolution. And Rachel Held Evans began to realize that she was a girl who had all the answers, but no questions and that her faith was dry and brittle because of it. When you have all the answers, you are not growing. We do not come to church to know all the answers. We come to church to know the right questions. One of my favorite books by Barbara Brown Taylor, her most recent, is titled Learning to Walk in the Dark. In that book, she reminds us that it is not only in light where holy and sacred things unfold, but also in the darkness of night. I should have known that. I studied scripture. But all of a sudden, I'm reading this book in which she reminds us that God uses the night sky as a setting to promise Abraham descendants as many as the stars. The Hebrews leave Egypt for freedom at night. A baby who will change the world is born under a star like no other baby before. In reading that book, I learned to think differently about the power of both darkness and light. And I'm still thinking about it and still asking questions about it. We follow Jesus who sat in the temple, the sacred space of his tradition, and he learned from the adults while listening and also asking questions and offering thoughts of his own. I want to encourage those of you who work with children to remember this. When a child asks you a question you don't know, don't tell them a fake answer. Do not tell them a lie. Tell them, in all honesty, I don't know. That's interesting. I want to know more about that. Thank you for asking me. So we haven't arrived if we know all the answers. And we believe in our tradition as United Methodists that Christians never stop growing. We never believe we're there or have all the answers somehow set in literal stone. Rather, there's a fancy word that describes this process, and it's called sanctification. It's a big word. It's kind of an old-fashioned word. But it is a word that means something very important. It means that we grow more perfectly in love and wisdom all our lives because salvation is a process. It's not a destination. It's a process of learning and loving and growing. So never think you know it all. I already know that. <laughs> never think you know it all. That is the kiss of death, spiritual death. Instead, choose life, and that is full of learning and wisdom and growth and a life committed to the truth to which we bear witness. And that truth is Jesus. The Christ, our Messiah, the risen one, the King. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, Pamela is going to come forward and share the list of concerns and joys for this week and share our morning prayer.
are Christians sympathy in standard. To the family and friends of Elizabeth Lee Stuart Gorman in her recent death and to Buddy Smith and family in the death of his father, Jim Tom Smith, hospitalized recently. Larry Griffiths, Mary Woodlaw, Harris, Wayne Jackson, Frank, Frankie Kierman, Troy Musi, Josephine Smith, Ines Duque, Gilbert and Cam Campbell. We rejoice in the in the right of North Glory Week, child of Aman, Amanda and Chad Week. We re rejoice in the baptism of Olive, Olivia Ruth Wilson, child of Ka Carson and Philip Wilson, of Greek Caroline Mar Marcusi, child of Cra Christ. Crystal and Andrew Marcusi, and to Caroline Kate Will Wilkerson, child of Rob, Robbie and James Wilkerson, and new members Carol Carol Evans and Mar Marlene Michael 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 T. Lord, thank you for this day. I pray that you bright bless blessing over this church to help the hurting and the sick for all of those in the hospital. I pray that they find a stride in you. For those who have recently passed away, I pray peace to their families. It is in this time that we hear you the low lotus, but even in the good, you are still here. In the mystery of right, we thank you for your many blessings, and we celebrate you wonderful creations, the creations that inspire love, peace, and hope. Change us and mold us, Lord, to be the people you have called us to be, and hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, we are in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy in the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. wanted to lift up our special offering, uh, second mile offering. This is above and beyond your regular gifts. Family Promise works in partnership with local congregations to offer homeless families safe shelter, nutritious meals, warm hospitality, transportation, and case management while they work to become self-sufficient. Pulaski Heights is one of those congregations that hosts Family Promise guests quarterly. Family Promise aims to help homeless families achieve independence, increase public awareness of the needs of homeless and low-income people, and to give people of all ages meaningful volunteer opportunities. Your second mile gifts today will go a long way to helping our brothers and sisters in Christ in our area. At this time, I would call our ushers forward to receive the gifts as we pray. God, part of the gift today is not only our finances and the money that we have to share for a special mission and for our own congregation to reach out further. It is also our own minds as we learn and listen and ask questions. Help us to see those as your gifts that we offer in the community of faith, that we don't need to have all the answers. In fact, it's better that we don't, so that we might ask the right questions, and that that truly is a gift from you. 
in all this we pray as we share these gifts in community. Amen.
Well, we're always talking um, about not adding people to our roles as new members, but training disciples and walking the journey together. And we would invite you to do that. Dig deeper. If you're already a member here and it's been a while since you've uh, studied, it's not too late. There's studies for each and every one of us as well as our kids. So let's remember that as we go into the week. Let us sing our last song. Would you sing this chorus for us? some of you um, who are regulars in this service, we need to offer greater hospitality um, to those who come in this service. And as we're doing the same thing in the sanctuary, so we need more folks for outside parking greeting as well as in our um, outside of Wesley Hall and, and outside the sanctuary and so forth. So really encourage you to share your gifts. Receive this blessing. Go forth and love God and your neighbor in all that you do. Bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ so that those who do not know that love will find in each and every one of us most treasured and generous friends. In the name of Christ, amen.